This scraper can scrape almost anything on the internet, and you will be surprised how easy it is to use it. Now, I will give you one by one exactly how you can use Firecrawl for your scraping needs. With that being said, I will show you a demo of and scraping that I already did a few minutes ago just to give you an idea, but we will dive in depth into exactly what each one of those options can do. Today, we're going to be focusing on the Firecrawl website. Now, if you're interested in to learning how you can use Firecrawl with an MCP, meaning a Modern Contest Protocol, I will release a video later on this week that will talk about that. And lastly, I will release a third video talking about how you can use Firecrawl API into your projects that you build perhaps using Replic Agents, V0, Lovable, Bolt, or one of the many other AI coding tools out there that you might want to use for your AI coding needs. Perhaps you're a Vibe coder, right? Now, with that being said, let's jump in. Let me show you exactly how to use Firecrawl in their website for different scenarios. Now, this is the Firecrawl playground. And as you can see, you have four different options that you can use while using the Firecrawl playground. You have the single URL, you have the crawl, you have the map, and you have the search. Just to display exactly what each one can do for you. On the single URL, it's going to scrape everything within a single page. So we're scraping the YC website library. And as you can see, they have a whole bunch of videos they have published. And this single URL scraper, all it does is it goes into that website and it scrapes everything that is there from thumbnail to the links to all the data that you will find inside the URL that you have provided to the AI. Now, moving on, we have the crawl feature and this crawl feature allows you to get detailed information about each link that it found in its page. Now, for you to be able to use this, all you have to do is you provide the link on the URL and you can click run, but you have some options here that you could use. So for this specific sample, we limit the amount of pages that it will crawl to 10. And the reason why is because all I'm doing is a demo. But as you can see down here, all the data that it crawled from each page that I provided to this crawl. And we have all 10 down here. In addition to that, you have the mass depth. So basically it will not crawl past two or three links down from the initial link that you provided, path that you wanted to focus or, or that you want to exclude or the ones that you want to focus on. You can also ignore sitemaps and allow, allow back links, backward links to be able to be scraped. And there are some more options here. As an example, you can use the HTML tags to exclude different type of elements within a page, so on and so forth. This is really useful if you want to get as much data as possible and you just want to start, let's say, from a blog page and scroll down to other pages down the path. So if you want to find all the blog posts that have been published on a blog or on a different type of products that have been added to a specific category, you could use that for that. Now we're going to move on to the map feature, which is similar, but a little bit different in certain ways. And I will show you what I'm talking about here in a moment. Now the map feature is a little bit different because rather than giving you all the data that was received from all those pages that it crawled, as we're going to see here in a moment, we're only crawling 10 of them. While it's doing that, yeah, as you can see, it's crawling 10 different pages within the same page. So basically 10 different links that is going through and it's visiting those pages and is getting the data from those pages. With the map feature, all you're doing is you're getting all the pages that you can get from the website, starting from the link that you provided all the way down to any link that I can find by visiting different pages and mapping everything out. So this is a good way for you to find exactly 
what is available in a website based on the links that they have published and the things that they have added to their sitemap. Now, lastly, we have the search feature. And the search feature allows you to provide a link for Fire Pro to go to a search engine and find those links that are relevant to what you're trying to do. So as an example, we have here, we entered the Y Combinator library and we got five different search results. I only asked for five, that's the limit. And you can set the language, the country and everything else. But we set up for five of them to be returned based on what I provided. But if I go here, we're going to see that we have similar. We have, let's go back. We have the whitecombinator.com companies, blog, investors. We go back to Google, Y Combinator, blog, investors. And at the very top, we have the library and followed by companies. So library, then the Y Combinator website followed by companies. So as you can see, all this is doing is, is scraping on the website. Now you don't necessarily have to provide a link on this one. You can say, for example, who are the, say, thieves at Y C. Uh, let's see how this goes, but basically it gave you some information about the executives right now. And uh, Gary Tang is the president and CEO of Y Combinator, and he's giving you some search results. You can also search for restaurants in Dallas, Texas, and it gives you a list of links that are returned from the search engine, which is really cool because if you really think about it, you can take now this, or you can take the JSON response and just copy this. And now you can bring it to the map feature. We got two links. Let's see what we would add. Uh, I haven't tried this before, but trying to get the restaurants, perhaps we can get 10 of them. This is in Spanish, because my hottest restaurant is in Dallas, Texas. So the best restaurants in Dallas, Texas. And some of these are not accessible to the crawler because they have captchas. And the way to solve it is by using the extract feature. The extract feature allows you to start extract structured data from single pages, multi pages, or entire websites using their AI and I will show you how to use it in the playground. So all you have to do is on the left sidebar, you're going to click on extract and you're going to click on try in extract playground. And we're going to provide a prompt here. So extract the restaurant and name. Average, no, rating. Let's see what else is there. And there for the ability from this website. So this will work in a way similar to how ChatGPT will work. You provide a prompt and the AI goes and does it for you. It's just that this is specifically for scraping. And as you can see, I provided a prompt and now he had pre-populated everything that it's going to go and look for. So here we have the website that I provided. So he's smart enough to understand that that's the website. And then here he has all the different things that it's going to be looking for. And here's my prompt and we can enable web search or we can enable the agent which will take action in the website to retrieve the data that we need. So if we were to ask for, actually, let me go back and make a quick change. The top 10 uh, restaurant name, average rating and their affordability. All right. 
If we were to ask for their email address, phone number, or whatever, where it has to click from the home page down to the restaurant profile page, that's where we want to enable the agent. So now we're going to run this and we're going to take a look and see what it comes up with. In my experience, the struct feature is actually really good, but again, it's a brand new feature. They're making improvements as we speak. So if we run into an issue, please know that it could happen, but in my experience, it's pretty good. So right now he's scraping the pages. Let's give it a moment. And after a few moments, here we have the data. So we got the restaurant name, the affordability, and the average rating. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it wasn't smart enough to pick the top ten on the page. And we were able to get the data that we wanted. Again, we can get the raw data here as well. So this is a really good way for you to go and extract the stack data or guide Firecrawl to extract the stack data that you need in order for you to be able to access what you want. Now, one quick thing that I would mention, and this will be significant for when we do the API or the MCP video, is that you have the JSON view here, and you can copy this JSON code and paste it into the API configuration when you do it, and that would help you get exactly what you need. So again, Playground is a really good way to figure out exactly how everything works so you can configure your MCP and your API. This is your starting point if you must. And again, you can get the code or you can use this in Sapier. So it's pretty cool. With this, we have made it to the end of yet another video. I hope that this video was useful for you and help you understand what Firecrawl is capable of. My favorite feature is the extract feature and the map feature as it provides you the most information that you will need in order for you to successfully crawl and scrape the data that you want rather than trying to figure out where to find it. But each feature have their own pros and cons and their own use cases. So I would encourage you to spend the time and figure out exactly how to use each feature and how to get the most out of it. With that being said, I will leave you the link down in the description below. The link allow me to get some money back. It doesn't cost you anything, but it supports this channel and it allows me to continue producing videos like this. With that being said, I really appreciate you taking your time and watching this video to the end. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.